Welcome to class number one, Jimmy, of yes. our antique uh, 19th century, about circa 1830, uh, Vermont handmade antique sofa made by John B. Warner. His, his uh, date of birth was 1806 and his, de his death was 1863. Okay. We don't know a lot more. He did own a cabinet shop in Wallingford, Vermont, and that's pretty much all we know about him. But this is much more information than I usually get from most of my pieces. So I would say that this is a fantastic start. So what we're going to do today, class one, a little different. I should, I should tell people, this is going to be like a briefing for you. Okay. Okay, so this sofa is a friend of mine. He, his, his, his love is finding uh, antiques like this okay. and having me restore them. He, he like, it does a worldwide search. He, he'll go anywhere to find that, that right piece. And this is a very special piece for How him. How long has he had it? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but what we're going to do is we're going to use traditional materials okay. and, and we're not going to use the staple gun at all. No way. No staple gun. You're kidding. And, I'm, and the, it's going to be a little different where I'm going to be helping you too. Okay. I'm not going to just, in the, in the past what we do is we have Jimmy, I, I tell Jimmy what to do and, and he we film him doing it and then I jump in when I need to. But this time, I think we're going to... What I'd like to do is work more side by side with you. Okay. Hopefully that will work with the camera, but that's Patrick's business, right? Yeah, that's why he's the man and we are just the props. Okay. So class one is going to be um, the briefing, and I'm gonna, I want to go over some of the materials that we're going to be using, the tools that we're going to be using. Okay. So we're going to start with, if you have any questions as we go along, please, like you do when we're doing our mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. online class. So the supplies and tools needed. Okay. Uh, we're going to need 15 pounds of horsehair. Okay. Okay. The, the seat is going to be double stuffed. It's not going to have any cushions. Okay. Okay. And we're going to use one roll of AAA cotton. Do you have any questions about AAA cotton? Is that what I've used in the past? You've used it, but there are three different cottons. There's A, double, I don't think you know this, A, double A, and AAA. Yes, so I think I've had... Do you know the difference? One. Well, one is more cleaner than the other. Exactly. The AAA is the cleanest. So what that means is they pick out the branch is actually on the on the A. You could find branches in there from the from I've the, never from had the plant, that plant, okay. a plant branch. Okay, you know, okay, and and actually dirt. So so it's picked and cleaned out. The AAA is the best cotton you can get, and it's about this thick. Okay. And sometimes we split cotton. We're not going to be doing that on this one, I don't think, but we'll we'll see. But that's a natural material. We're going to need two one-pound boxes of six-ounce tacks. You know what those are. Those yeah. are the universal tacks that we use. No staples, right? No staples, and we replace the staples. Those, oh, are the, wow. those are what we used to use traditionally in a Two boxes. Is that? You're going to be using two, two pounds of six ounce tacks probably on this job. This is going to be something. And we're going to use one box of 12 ounce tacks. That's mainly used for the webbing. Okay. We may not use the whole box because we only put the, we're going to be using the six ounce tacks, I think, at least for okay. now on the seat webbing okay, uh, and then follow up with in each red area of the seat a 12 ounce tack just to just for firmness just to, to for lasting okay uh, four yards of cambric okay and cambric uh, 12 yards of horsehair fabric let me show people that now it, as, did you guys hear what I just said horsehair fabric now why, Jimmy, I'll, I'll give you a little quiz. Why do you think horsehair fabric only comes about, I think this is 20, uh, 20 we can wow. measure it. Wow, this is it? <clears throat> That's horsehair fabric. It feels like a nylon. Can you hold that for a second? Yeah. I want to see how wide this is. Depends on how big the horse is, seriously, you guys. 27 inches. Okay. Do you have any idea why it's only 27 inches wide? Well, you, I think you gave it away when you said how, uh, with the horse, uh, it was regard to the horse. It's not like a right. universal sheet of three to four feet. It's so, uh, uh, 50 pounds <laughs> of horse hair comes from a different part of the horse. That comes from the body. Right. That, that's a shaved, uh, that's shaved, but the horse is shaved like sheep, they're shed. Okay. So, they, they take good care of their horses. They're mainly from, it's a Polish import, and they shave, share, they share their horses okay. like sheep. So they're, they're interested in keeping their horses healthy and well-fed so that the horses that come to me, mm -hmm. it's shining, it's beautiful, and it's clean. They clean the horse there. That comes in loose. Okay. So this is from another part of the horse. Do you have any idea which part of the horse that's from? I couldn't even guess. I don't know. I well, what's the longest hair on a horse? I get these two would know because they volunteer a horse farm. Oh, well, how yeah. you well, they're nature, they're, in all yeah. fairness, Jimmy, you're a city boy. So if yeah, I, I asked you, I, how long is the average rat tail, you'd know. 
Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, wait a minute now. I saw that on National Geographic last week. Hold on a second. All right. But it's the tail. This is the tail? It's the t from the tail mainly. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah. And look at the colors. Isn't the colors beautiful? Yeah. You know, you know I, I mean, honestly, it, like I say, it reminds me of nylon. Yeah. It's got a really, what you saying, it's got a really smooth yes, look. Yes, very tight. You can feel the tightness. So though. you can hold on to that for a okay. little while. So we have about 12 yards of that, which is fine for the sofa. And one row of seat webbing, which is the red webbing, which is the stronger webbing. Okay. The black I don't even use. 10 yards of burlap. Okay. A spool of nylon twine for our stitching the horse hair. A lot of stuff, huh? Oh my six God. ounce gimp tack. So the difference between a gimp tack and a six ounce upholstery tack is the gimp tack is a small blue headed tack mm -hmm. that we're going to be used. Uh, let me just grab another component here. So this is the, the antique gimp that my friend has purchased too. And so the gimp tacks are going to be used, real traditional. Oh wow, this is nice. He doesn't want any glue. He specified no glue. Wow, right. this is quite this. This is like a challenge to a point. Yeah, yeah, this we is going to be something. You're going to you're going to do just great. I'm just going to throw all this at you and walk out of the room and say I'll be back in an hour. Yeah, and, we'll and, and, and you'll still see me probably <laughs> leaning back in the chair, going, "Which is what?" So that's a scroll of gimp, okay. and then four feet of fox edging about, and then believe it or not, the tools needed. I don't have scissors up here. I forgot the scissors, but a tack hammer, a webbing stretcher, and four, five, and six inch curved needles. And then the last thing is the skill. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, well, I'll leave now. <laughs> <laughs> so now what I want to do is I want to move this uh, away. And I, okay. want, I want people to get the full effect of this sofa. Patrick even has an overhead. And I think what I want you to do as, the first, as part of the first class mm -hmm. is to kind of um, find out <laughs> uh, what, how many webbings or the placement of the webbing. We'll talk about that once we move this. Okay? Okay. Show. So let's move this. As part of the first class, to finish up too, Jimmy's going to um, determine, I'll help him, um, we're going to put the webbing, always when you work webbing, you guys, you work from the floor, okay? okay. You never pre-cut your webbings. Right, because you never, you can't guess, it, especially like this right now. You just yeah, we had a, an extra problem. Do you have the overhead up there, Patrick? We have an extra little problem with this, okay? Oh. Normally what we do is we go from the, back to the front, okay, right? Right. And stretch it to the front and tack it. Right. But look at this little lip, this finished veneer lip here. Okay. That is not going to allow us to do that because we're going to ruin that. So, so this is part yeah. of the briefing. So let me just show people. <clears throat> this is really important. So if you, if 99% uh, of the times, you start in the back, you tack in the back, and then you, you stretch to the front. Okay. You stretch to the front on this with all that You're pressure. You're snap it. So we have to, you know, problem solve. That's the number one, number one tool of an upholsterer is that he's able to problem solve. Okay. Well, right? let's see if I can get the answer right on this one. Then. So what do you think the problem? What do you think this solves the problem of this? Well, we'd have to probably go on the inside with this. Wouldn't well, you? Don't want to do that. Okay. So there's another solution. Okay. So do you want me to give it to you? Yes, I do. Because I'm trying to think without going. We're going to go from the back. You're going to. Oh. Now why do we why do we go from normally why do we go from the back to the front instead of the front to the back, which we have to do. They're gonna come over here because Patrick's showing me we're not on camera. Okay. Are we in camera now, Pat? Is that on camera? So um, the reason normally that you start from the back to the front is that um, usually the back rail stronger than the front rail. Okay. But look at the stock on this, Jimmy. Yeah. Look how thick that is. Yeah. Do you know you can't get milled wood like this? You go to Home Depot now, you're going to get a two by four pine. Uh, right? Yeah, well, you probably, yeah. Look at the job this guy did. I mean, look at look what he did here. He actually beveled the top of this, uh, you know, yeah, it's rail here, this extra rail that he's got. Uh, it's called a spacer, I think. Um, so we are going to start from the back, uh, from the front, and web to the back. Now this presents another problem. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna, you're definitely gonna need a, 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 an assistant. So I'll be your assistant. Oh, we'll you're, I'm, oh, I thought it was the other <laughs> way around. I'm like, oh, well, I we can, can pretend. I'm gonna glide through this. So we have to get this anchored. We're gonna be getting this anchored about halfway. Okay. And then we're gonna stretch to the back, and then somebody has to be tacking over here because you can't do both. Okay. Now, if you were working by yourself. 
Mm -hmm. You could stretch it and pin tack it on the back. Pin tacking okay. is that great tool that we use, right? Yeah. Halfway in tack. Okay. And then come around if you were working by yourself. But since you have me, or since we're working together, I'll be, or you'll be able to tack that while, you, while I'm, or you're okay. stretching. Okay. The question I have is sure. how, how many how many tacks are we going to use? That's a good question, Jimmy. You, what you want with the tack work at the fold, the fold gets. Um, are we doing it like stables? Fold always gets five tacks. Like, yeah, uh, not really. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six ounce tacks. Okay. One, two, three, four, so a total of nine tacks. Okay. And then when you when you stretch it, right on the when you stretch it, it'll be stretched um, back there. Um, you get five tacks and then fold and get four on top. So okay. you only see on one side you only see four tacks, or you can go five. It doesn't matter, four or five. Mm -hmm. But you don't see all nine, but they're there. Right. All nine will be there. Does that do you follow me? Yeah. So I do want to review one other thing before we get to this thing. Hold on a second. So my my friend has these notes. He wants to make sure. I got to call him up and say, <laughs> "Look at <it>, buddy." <laughs> Remove old batting and jute webbing. There's some. We still have some stripping to do on the bottom. Oh, I okay. see. Yeah, okay. There's some uh, double layer horsehair. This is what him and I discussed. Okay. I was telling him, which was on the seat. Okay. It's a double layer, and that's going to have to be stitched double. That's going to, and that's going to be a series of stitches. It's going to be a blanket stitch, mm -hmm. and there's going to be back stitching that goes on there to the burlap. Okay. Okay. The the blanket stitch is going to be. Uh, st uh, stitched to the fox edging on the front. Fox edging is the roll, and I'll show people that. This is the fox edging. Oh, wow. Okay. So you need to profile, you guys, and you need to build up. Oh, and can you give me that metal piece over there? Yes, I was just about to ask you. What so this metal piece came with the sofa, and it was, it, this is a very old repair. And it goes on that it goes in that leg over there on the inside. So we're going to replace that. And the thing about old repairs is they're significant to the history of the piece. Okay. So it's like the machine age. So this was built before the machine age. Okay. And then machine age. So blacksmith could have made that. This is still very old. I, I don't know, Jimmy. I don't know much about metal work, but you know, if a blacksmith made it, it's not machine age. It's it's. Yeah, I'm. I'm well, well, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing. Sure. I, you can look at it. I'm guessing the sofa was built 1830, the leg broke in 1910, and Machine Age uh, made this, um, and then we paired yeah. the leg with that on the back. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. But you it's interesting to, to figure it out. It didn't. It was not definitely not original. Oh, of course not. Okay. So we got the uh, hand stitch. We're going to hand stitch our edge roll in front. Gimp, we talked about the gimp tags, and then he has a special... Uh, note here, no hot glue or Elmer's glue, no glue at all. And we do use glue sometimes to put the gimp on, you know, hot glue. Yes, that, right. Which is more of a modern tech. So he's really a purist, which is fine. I, it's part of the fun, I think. Really. Well, yeah, I mean, if you try to tell people, oh, this is your first project, and you're going, you're starting in, like, from the Flintstone age up to... I and, I, and I will tell you, and, and my friend is going to be viewing this, um, I want to keep the... I know that this sounds odd, but I want to keep this. I like the original. I don't want to strip this one. I'm going to strip the bottom. It has to be stripped clean. But these are the original tacks spit by the original upholsterer. And if you can get a close-up of this, people wonder, what's that rust that I see? Jimmy, if you look closely enough, do you see the rust? Oh, yeah. I can see some of them right here. That's the saliva of the upholsterer. That's his DNA that's still in the sofa. Okay, so what is this material? What's behind This was here? an old canvas, this horse hair behind here. Okay. So I want to keep this, and I'm going to tell, tell everybody now, I want, to, I want to keep it. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cover it with a nice AAA cotton. Okay. But I want to keep it for historical purposes. It's the same reason why I want to keep that metal piece. Okay. Just the, the historical. And then we could find maybe a label, hopefully, when we turn this up, we could find the man's signature, and we'll take wow. a picture of that. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have, make sure we'll that We'll definitely have another historic... I mean, this is really cool, because when you think of it, this man died. He died during the Civil War, the man that made this. He might have gone to war. And he was born around, yeah, that's right, Jim. He might, yeah, I didn't even think of that. Didn't even think of that. I he mean, might. how many people, I mean, right. almost in any, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, people gave up yeah. their livelihoods. Yeah, I didn't even, it didn't even dawn on me. I thought, I was thinking natural death, maybe, maybe it was, yeah. he, he died in the war. Mm -hmm. 
which yeah. makes it even more important to me. Yeah. You know? Now it, uh, there's another avenue we can see. So I think to finish up, what I'd like you to do okay. is take your time. I, I, I think you're pretty good at math, right? Yeah. Um, I want you to try to see what you think the spacing will be for the webbing. And I'll give you a little tip on how to do it, right? You, you have to measure the webbing, which is three and a half inches wide. Okay. And split it up in two. Don't look at the whole thing. Split it up from here to here and see, and then chalk what you think. How many pieces? And I want, what I want is a very generous, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I almost want them not right on top of one another, but I want about a half of an inch spacing. And, and why do I want that? Okay. Because there's no springs in this. Oh, so, so this that's is going to get a lot. Yeah, the cl I really want a close half inch or three quarter of an inch distance between the two. Okay. So we'll see how you do it. Half inch, that. okay. Now I will, wow, this is, like this we is, do on the is. online classes, okay, I yeah. will walk away to see, and no pressure. Okay. I will give you another tip though. Can I have the chalk? Yes. So guys, when you're using a chalk, don't use school chalk, by the way, use an, a preferred upholstery chalk. Okay, I'm looking for a pair of scissors. Right there, Jimmy. Oh. But these, this chalk is designed to point out. So take your scissors. And point it out, so you get a better, a finer line, Jimmy, when you, oh, when you okay. go to market. So see how you do. All right. No pressure. Okay. So I, I think that's good for now. Okay. Uh, Jimmy, I'm really excited about this. Uh, so class this one. This is definitely going to be like, wow. This, this really required <coughs> a little bit of, uh, on class one, um, a little bit of uh, briefing and history, which is really important. Um, our approach, the tools that we need, the different size needles and things like that that we need just to get you Well, this is basically excited. from scratch. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it didn't. It, we don't have any of the. It came to me like this. The only thing original. Oh, I was going to say, did you strip wise, this down? Yeah, no, you? this came to us like this. So. so we did the stripping down, or this it was this. Thing? I don't know who did it. It can I have to <coughs> ask my friend. I'm not sure. And where does he live? Oh, well, never mind. Well, actually, he lives in a very historical town, Concord, Massachusetts. Oh, really? Which, okay. Believe it or not, uh, the Concord, the Old North Bridge, which okay. is 1775 and, okay. and earlier, okay. is no longer there. The wood on that is no longer. I'm surprised they didn't try to, well, maybe they keep it in the museum if they have Well, I don't know what happens to the original wood. It, <coughs> might be in somebody, it might be somebody's door or fence that's right. now gone. But the point I'm making is, this being 1830, mm -hmm. This is intact from 1830. Now, the North Bridge, in all fairness, it's outside, I yes. know. But I don't think there are any original parts left on that. As a matter of fact, I think it's fairly newer. It's it's newer than this. Okay. So Now, do you know what the wood is for this? <coughs> you, that you, looks you, like a bird's, uh, what they call, bird uh, bird's eye, I think, or something like that. Not okay. birch, but but the veneer is like a, a, a certain tiger, tiger, tiger wood. Yeah. Uh, you know what would be interesting to see? What, how you would take care but of this. But this is mahogany. I think the rest of it's either mahogany or walnut. The reason I don't know is because once the finish is on, it's hard to see the graining and once the veneer is on. So if you're yeah. asking what the wood is underneath, we could probably get one of those apps and the apps actually identify the wood. Well, okay. So well, it, that well I'm just wondering about the care of it too. I mean, this is something you wouldn't say, oh, I'm going to sand it down. I'm going to... No, no, no. no. It's, yeah, um, it's, in fairly, it's in really remarkable shape. For a hundred years old? Absolutely. More than that, 1830. So uh, It's almost uh, 200 years old. Yeah. It'll 200, be 200 years then, old in seven like years. Something like this is usually, I hate to say, it, already used in a fireplace. Jimmy, I think that's going to finish it for class one. And okay. ne next time we're going we're gonna to get in earnest in class two. We're going to do the webbing, hopefully finish the webbing in class two. Right. 
Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to the burlap, but maybe we'll we get can to move the along with it. Yep. So you should be excited. I am excited. This is totally something new for it's me. It's an honor. This, this is. I mean, yeah. this is definitely something that if you, you know, your first day of upholstery school and you were saying, well, what do, what do you mean? I was the, oh my God, I think people would be leaving the door. But I'm impressed because I like this type of stuff. So we could count on you for class Oh, absolutely. Two. Yeah, dinner okay. too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Thanks a lot. No problem, Kevin. Okay, Thank take you. Take it easy.